Okay, I'm reading from Exodus chapter 2. One day when Moses had grown up, he went out to his people and looked on their burdens. And he saw an Egyptian beating a Hebrew, one of his people. And he looked this way and that, and seeing no one, he struck down the Egyptian and hid him in the sand. When he went out the next day, behold, two Hebrews were struggling together. And he said to the man in the wrong, why do you strike your companion? And he answered, who made you a prince and a judge over us? Did you mean to kill me as you killed the Egyptian? Then Moses was afraid and thought, surely the thing is known. When Pharaoh heard of it, he sought to kill Moses. But Moses fled from Pharaoh and stayed in the land of Midian, and he sat down by a well. Do you see how the period of time takes place so quickly within the verses? They're cut, they're, they're, he's cutting right to the chase, okay? Right to the, right to the crucial issues. So what is the event that precipitated Moses coming to Midian? He sees an Egyptian killing a slave and he killed the Egyptian, buries him in the sand, hopes nobody saw it, but two Hebrews did see it. And the news ends up getting to Pharaoh and Pharaoh is gonna kill Moses and Moses has to flee. So where does he come? To the area of Midian. And he stayed in the land of Midian and he sat down by a well. That's quite a journey to come from Egypt, right? Now the priest of Midian had seven daughters the plot thickens <laughs> and they came and drew water and filled the troughs to water their father's flock the shepherds came and drove them away but Moses stood up and saved them and watered their flock when they came home to their father Ruel or Jethro he said how is it that you have come home so soon today and they said an Egyptian delivered us out of the hand of the shepherds and even drew water for us and watered the flock and he said to his daughters, then where is he? Why have you left the man? Call him that he may eat bread. After all, I've got seven daughters. And, <laughs> I need, and when there's a good man that comes along, I've got to, you know, we've got to invite him to dinner. And Moses was content to dwell with the man. I guess so. He had seven <laughs> lovely daughters. He was content to dwell with the man. And he gave Moses his daughter, Zipporah. She gave birth to a son, and he called his name Gershom, for he said, I have been a sojourner in a foreign land. During those many days, the king of Egypt died, and the people of Israel groaned because of their slavery and cried out for help. Their cry for rescue from slavery came up to God. And God heard their groaning, and God remembered his covenant. Remember, we've spoken numerous times on this trip it's all about the covenants God's solemn oath to his people 430 years before the people were down in Egypt God made a solemn oath to Abraham that in thee and in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed and God remembered his covenant promise to Abraham to make of him a great nation, he'd be the father of a great multitude, to bless him and to give him a land. And God remembered, he heard their groaning all those many years later. And he remembered his covenant with Abraham, with Isaac, and with Jacob. And God saw the people of Israel, and God knew. And through all of this, and through the miraculous situation that took place in Egypt, Moses and his upbringing. God is grooming his man to be the deliverer of his people, all to keep his covenant promise that he had made with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And it's here, most likely historically accurate, that Moses came. He helps the seven damsels in distress. <laughs> invited back to the home of the father and from one of the seven he meets his wife Zipporah and they have a son and God remembers his covenant promise and from here he will call Moses to the backside of the wilderness where he sees a burning bush and 
heads back to Egypt. So an amazing, amazing place when you see it in the context of God's word. Okay. Yeah. Good.